Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Friday, February 5th, and the next stimulus package is picking up some steam. So I have more on that and all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, can we talk about all the snow that we got today? Absolutely beautiful. But I do hope that everybody is safe out there. Now, what's coming up next? I don't know, I'm not a meteorologist, but thankfully I know someone who is. So I'm gonna pass it off to our first alert weather team. The weekend's about here and here's what we're looking at. Tomorrow is not a first alert day. Temperatures will be very similar to today. It is going to be breezy, so the wind chill tomorrow will still be a kind of a factor. It's not going to be quite as windy as today, though. Saturday night into Sunday, we could be looking at a little bit of snow. This would lead to uh, some blowing snow on Sunday and Sunday's high drops back to about 16 degrees. So here's what we're looking at. A first alert day on Sunday for Powdery snow overnight into Sunday morning that will lead to some blowing snow in the morning and highs will fall back into the teens and really Sunday is the start of a long stretch of Arctic cold in the area that's going to last at least a week, if not longer than a week. Today it's uh, up in the 20s in most locations, including 23 at Toledo Express Airport and we forecast an afternoon high of 24. The, the wind chill though, it's eight. And up in Hillsdale, the latest wind chill is three. Marblehead's at 12, and Oak Harbor reports 16 for the wind at chill at this hour. Of course, once the sun sets into tonight, it will feel a lot, lot colder. A little bit of sunshine has helped out at least a bit. Now here's tomorrow. I do think there's gonna be a bit of sunshine and a mixture with clouds, kind of like today. And then skies will cloud up in the afternoon. There's a chance of snow, but I think it holds off until after eight o'clock tomorrow night. And the amount of snow with these can be very tricky because the uh, snow making ability of a system like this sometimes really, really overachieves. And you can see that our first alert hour by hour forecast is painting in some darker shades of blue. And with it being so cold, this will be a very fine snow. It doesn't have a lot of moisture content. It can stack up very high quickly, but also really blow around and be very hard to measure. Uh, even two inches of snow can create drifts up to a foot. So Saturday night into Sunday morning, watch for that snow to zip on through. And Sunday, I don't think there'll be more snow falling, but with the breeze, you'll have blowing snow all around throughout the course of the day. And early this morning, the Senate approved a measure that would push President Joe Biden's stimulus plan through the chamber without Republican support. Vice President Kamala Harris was in the chair to cast the tie-breaking vote. The action came after senators pulled an all-nighter where they voted on amendments that could define the eventual COVID-19 aid bill. The budget now returns to the House where it will likely be approved again to reflect the changes made by the Senate. Then it can work its way through committees so the additional relief can be finalized by mid-March when extra unemployment assistance and other pandemic aid expires. Biden has suggested that he may be flexible on that $1.9 trillion top line figure and on ways to more narrowly target direct payments. But the $1,400 amount on top of the $600 sent out by the Trump administration in December appears to be non-negotiable. Biden said, I'm not going to start my administration by breaking a promise to the American people. Now, Politico reports senators on both sides of the aisle want to phase out checks starting at an income level of $50,000 per year for individuals and $100,000 per year for couples, depending on how they file their taxes. Checks would then gradually get smaller with the cutoff being at $75,000 per year for individuals and $150,000 for couples. We'll, of course, keep you updated as things become more final. And officials within the Biden administration are considering a move to send out masks to every American. The hope is to nudge individuals to do their part in lowering coronavirus transmission. White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain said that officials are looking into using mask supplies that the government already has in its stockpile. Klain said the administration hopes to make an announcement on this possibility in the next few days or next week. Biden has pushed Americans to wear masks during at least the first 100 days of his presidency, a step he says could save thousands of lives as many wait for their spot in line to receive the vaccine. And teachers, listen up. The IRS has announced that educators who purchase protective items for COVID-19 and have not been reimbursed can write them off on their taxes. Any expenses for protective items purchased after March 12, 2020 can be included with a limit of up to $250 per person. The IRS said this in a statement. 
Eligible educators include any individual who's a kindergarten through grade 12 teacher, instructor, counselor, principal, or aide in a school for at least 900 hours during a school year. But that statement doesn't make clear how this move will affect many teachers who are forced to work remotely from home because of state and local guidelines. Now here's a look at items that are eligible for a tax write-off. Face masks, disinfectant for use against COVID-19, hand soap, hand sanitizer, disposable gloves, tape, paint, or chalk to guide social distancing, physical barriers like clear plexiglass, air purifiers, and other items recommended by the CDC to be used for the prevention of the spread of COVID-19. For more information, check out the link I have in the description of this video. And Democrats in Washington are urging Biden to forgive $50,000 in student loan debt for millions of Americans. Senators Chuck Schumer and Elizabeth Warren, along with a number of other Democrats, introduced a resolution calling on Biden to sign an executive order to forgive student loan debt. So if Biden signs an executive order and forgives these loans, who gets the bill? Well, an economic professor at the University at Houston said it falls back on the federal government, so that means the taxpayers. But he explained that in some sense, we are already on the hook. He said a lot of people whose loans would be forgiven are already behind and some would probably default on them. But so far, nothing has been signed and nothing is official, so we will keep you posted as more on this develops. Now, I'm gonna level with you and admit that I don't really care for football. Sorry, I know. But while you all are tailgating for the Super Bowl this Sunday, I'm gonna be tailgating for the 17th annual Puppy Bowl. That is right, Animal Planet's Puppy Bowl is happening Super Bowl Sunday at 2 p.m. The three-hour event will feature 70 adoptable puppies from 22 animal shelters and rescue organizations from across the Northeast. Team Rupp is looking to reclaim their title in the Lombardi Trophy after last year's tough loss to Team Fluff. This year, Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg are hosting and throwing the ultimate tailgate party. Oh, I can only imagine. All of the puppies and kittens that have participated in Puppy Bowl previously have wound up being adopted, so hopefully this year's roster will find their forever families too. You can watch the Puppy Bowl on Animal Planet, of course, and it will be streaming live on Discovery+. Plus. And I guess if you're planning to watch the Human Super Bowl, I can give you those deets too. Pre-game coverage starts on WTOL 11 at 11.30 a.m. and then kickoff for the big game starts at 6.30 p.m. In the comments, please tell me what snacks you plan on having because to me that's what's most important. But that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.